Hi, this is Christian. Now, before we begin coding, we need to install some tools. So, if you want to head over to ApacheFriends.org or search for XAMPP, and you will be presented with this screen here. On the Windows, just click the download button here for XAMPP for Windows, and then just download that installer. And I'm not going to install it again, I already have it installed, but the installation process is very straightforward. Okay, so just click on the installer, run it, install it, and once you are done with the installation, you can then uh, launch it. And once you launch that, you get to this screen here. And let me uh, close my um, screen over here. So you see uh, this screen. And when we run our application, you want to start the Apache and also start the MySQL. Okay, you just need those two there. And if there are any conflict with the port numbers here, you need to either turn off the other applications that are using that, or you can go into the, uh, the config here and config the uh, Apache HTTPD config file. So if you open that file and just look for the port, everywhere that says port 80, like down here, there should be two places. You can just search for it, port 80 and change that to a different port, like 8000 or 8080 or something like that, okay? And then save this file and you should be good to go. Same thing with the MySQL here. So, I mean, usually you may not have this problem. And then just to make sure that it does work, um, because this uh, distribution gives you the environment to run PHP, also an Apache server, that's what this A stands for, M is for MariaDB or MySQL, and the P's here are for PHP and Perl, okay? So under the Apache tab over here, click the admin tab link, and you should get a window um, that looks like this. It's on a different screen here. Okay, so if you see that, then Apache is running uh, and you should be good to go. And if you click on the PHP my admin up here, top right, it should load your database. Okay, so that means MariaDB is running and PHP is running and you are good to go. Next, we're going to install an IDE. So back on the browser here, if you go to jetbrains.com website, okay, you can search for it or just go there directly. And you should be presented with your main screen here. Just accept the cookies here for now. Now you want to create an account and there are, uh, are two ways to do that. If you want to get the free version, if you're a student or a faculty or a staff at a college or, or, or a school, you need to go through a different route. Okay, that means I don't. You don't want to go to the link here and just click the the registration here. Okay, so if you click that little icon at the top right, and you try to register, you're gonna get the regular registration as a business. So uh, I want you to go to the very bottom of the screen. If you go all the way down to the end of that uh, the the footer area, there is a uh, link that says get your student pack. Okay, so if you click on that then you're going to get a free educational licenses for yeah not just for uh you know teachers and students but for other uh, as well as you can see these options over here okay so i'm assuming that you are a student or have access to these uh, options here then uh, go ahead and scroll down and click on the apply and then now you are presented with this screen here just to you know just choose your uh, uh, options up here and to get a free account. Okay, as you can see, you can uh, authenticate using any one of these options here as well. Okay, so it's really, really nice uh, tool for for uh, le learners and it's kind of nice for Jepring to do that. So um, pick your options and fill in the blanks here, submit the application. You're gonna get an email in your mailbox, click on the link, then it's gonna take you back to this uh, similar screen to go through the process where you can create your account and a password okay you need that to authenticate after that you can come back to this site we'll just go to the jetbrains main site again and now you can use you can try all of their products for free for one full year okay and then after a year the end you can renew that as well so for us we're going to need php storm so you can go to the tools and just pick php storm over here and uh, download this uh, application. Even though this is free 30 day trial, that's okay. So download that uh, and install it. And once you are done installing PHP Storm, 
run it. I'm going to close this now. When you run PHP Storm for the first time, you're going to see something like the following. Okay, you get this screen here and you need to authenticate. If you don't have an account, you can also use the free version, which is a 30 day trial version. It's fully functional, but it will expire after 30 days. So to activate your uh, JetBrains account, you just put the email or the username you use to create your account here. So I'm going to go and activate mine. Okay, so once you activate, if it's successful, then you should be presented with this welcome screen for the first time. Okay, and then you are good to go. And so I want to kind of walk you through to configure your PHP first. So click on a new project, and we're going to create one, and you can call it whatever you want to go here, just for the configuration purposes. So just put test for now, create. Okay, so here we are. This is your uh, project folder. There's no file in there yet. If you click on that blue bar here, right click and go to new PHP file. And just again, just type in test or index and hit enter and uh, type a message here. Okay, so pi echo hi and uh, save that file. And if you go to the right of the screen, you'll see this little icons here. Choose the browser that's installed your machine. I'm using Windows, so if you click on Chrome, it's going to try to run your app. Okay, you get this screen in the bottom right here. It says PHP interpreter is now configured. So that's the first thing you need to do. You need to configure that first. So click on this blue link here. Okay. And if you happen to, you know, accidentally close it and that message is gone, you can just run it again. It's going to come back again. Okay. Uh, I didn't show you what it was, but when you run, uh, I didn't see here. When you run that, it's going to, you're going to get a 502. Let me try again. Okay. If I run it, you'll see that you get a 502 bad gateway. It just means that it doesn't run PHP. Okay, so we need to configure that. So uh, again, click on the configure here and then go and choose the language settings. I'm, I'm going to use a 7.0 or higher. You can go to 7.4 if you want to, but anything above 7 would be good. All right, okay, so I'm going to put, uh, I'll, I'll use 7.4 here. And then we need to get the CLI here. As you can see, there's no interpreter. So click on the ellipsis icon on the right side and then we're going to add one, click the plus sign. And then go find a, a PHP interpreter. I, I see here my ZAMP. Okay. If it's not shown here, then just click on the other local and go find that inside your program. Okay. So the name will be just called PHP. You don't have to change that. And the executable is in that ZAMP folder you installed. Okay. So if you go and browse and it takes you to the uh, go to the C drive, you should have a ZAMP folder in here the ZAMP folder, expand that ZAMP folder and you see, you see a PHP folder and just select that PHP folder and click OK. Well, actually, no, you had to go and select that PHP.exe file. So scroll down until you find that PHP executable, which is this guy right here. OK, click OK and everything should be pre-filled for you and then you just click OK and then OK again. And then now you are good to go. If you run it again, Okay, you see this now, you see a little high message on the top left here, it's kind of small to see, but you're good to go and you're all set.